thought I gotta go down under my desk and then like come and compose myself or something. <laughs> anyway, this Hello everybody, uh, my name's Peter and I have a box. And I've only opened this box a little bit just to peek inside and make sure it wasn't actually just full of Twizzlers or something that I would need to take a day off for and sit around eating. It is actually, it seems to be full of some art supplies which we're gonna look at and then I think try to make some art out of. But first, let's see what they are. Here we've got a box of something, another box, another box, a knot box, another box, and to top it all off, baggies. We love baggies, I guess. They look pretty cool. First, let's look in this box. Looks like this is a pack of Pilot Parallel pens, which are, as far as I know, kind of like pens for calligraphy. And I've had these before and then, and then lost them almost immediately somehow, but I never really got a chance to use them. So I'm glad I have these again, and maybe I'll make better use of them this time. And then we have a Faber. Is it Faber? Uh, Faber or Faber? Castell. These are all sent to me by uh, Gold Spot Pens, by the way. Thanks again for the the goodie box. It's a cool looking fountain pen. I like the little rubber bumps on the side. It's got a nice tip there. It's already have ink. Oh, it already has some ink in it. Look at that. Now that's luxury. Primed and ready to go. Oh yeah. That one looks pretty cool. I like that. And then here we have a, uh, I don't know. It's just like a French word. Carandache. Gene Genève. Oh my goodness. Everyone that actually knows how to say that, go ahead and correct me. It's fine. Oh, I like the, I like this cardboard case here. I like that a lot. I'm not sure what this is exactly. It's a ballpoint pen, I think. Swiss made, it says. Under there it says, Karandash again. And you can press the button at the back. For the ballpoint tip to come and to go. It comes and it goes. Press up, press down. Press up, press down. This one has a good feel to it. Just the texture on the outside of the pen is good. It's got a good weight to it. This probably, does the clip move? Oh, it says, it says made with recycled Nespresso capsules. That seems very hip to me. I'm not exactly sure what an Nespresso capsule is, but uh, I'm, I'm, I feel like I should be into it. It should be relevant to my interests. Then here we have a, a Kawiko pen of some sort. Oh, I, haven't, I don't know if I've seen this Kawiko pen yet. It's bold, colorful. Put cartridges in it, probably a piston. Oh, oh look, there's a cartridge. Should I pop that sucker in there? Might as well. ka -chunk. I like that a lot. There's that nice Kawiko emblem right there. And my fingertips. Oh yeah, Germany. It's a pen and it's got lots of sides. And here, last but not least, everyone always says that when they come to the last but not least thing. A Pelicano Up. 
upgrade your handwriting. You can never tell if a pen is a twist, a twist or a pop. A nice kind of a chromy, creamy, goldy colored pen. The tip here is pristine. Look at that. So what happens on the inside. It's got a nice grip here. I like that, it's kind of rubbery. On the inside, it's got another cartridge, I'm sure. Oh, that's a big, long one. Probably one of the longest cartridges I've ever seen, but it's probably some universal variant you can get. You can probably also get some, um, some piston for it also, which I would probably do if I was gonna use it. Really, for any pen I'm gonna use regularly, I get a, it posts well, which I, this is what I've been told is what it's called when your pen cap goes on the back of your pen. Apparently that's called posting among people that are really into fountain pens. They've got their own little lingo, you know, lingo to alienate the outsiders. Post up. Pelicano up. Interesting. I like it. Seems kind of um, a mix between fancy and clinical for some reason. Maybe it's the colors that makes me think of medical equipment. I'm not sure why. But for now, what I think we should do for this video is try and see if it's possible. Wait, these are out of order. There we go. 1.5, 2.4, 3.8, 6.0. Try and see if it's possible to doodle with a pen intended for calligraphy. And I think it, it has to be possible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this orange one for now. How do you get it, how do you get it out? Hello? Come out, come out wherever you are. Here we are. What is this thing? Oh, can I use this thing to suck up ink and put it in here? Oh, that's even better than these cartridges, isn't it? Is that a thing I can do? That's for cleaning. You put it in here, like so. Ah. That's what it does. Hmm. Is this black ink? Let's try it. Here we go. Pop it in. So then I got started on this and I took a couple minutes just to get all four of the pens working. It was a little bit of fiddling and I don't really like cartridges that much, but I learned quickly that it helps a lot to give the cartridges a little bit of a squeeze once I get them in there, just to get the ink flowing up towards the nib. I got them all going and my first, oh look, I did two drawings here. My first drawing, I tried to embrace a more, uh, I tried to embrace the spirit of the pens, in a sense. I tried to doodle in kind of a calligraphic, cal calligraphic style, where I tried to keep the nib uh, slanted maybe at like a 45 degree angle, the same 45 degree angle for most of the drawing. I, there was a little bit of inconsistency there, so I kind of, I don't know, some big like swirls. Some people can really do great calligraphic, <laughs> is that even a real word? calligraphy style drawings, right? And I've seen them before. I was inspired by them, um, but it just wasn't really working for me. Look, it kind of worked out, kind of didn't, wasn't really enjoying it that much, but I won I did one main doodle with it that way. And before I moved on to a different one, one thing I noticed about this ink was that came with these pens and these cartridges, I noticed that it was, uh, it was smudge-tastic, very smudgy. And this is normally okay for when you're just doing regular calligraphy and you're writing along, and if you're right-handed. It's just another awful, awful thing to have to deal with if you're left-handed, along with not being able to eat on the right side of a right-handed person without bumping elbows the whole time. I didn't plan this ahead at all, because usually if I let the ink dry, I can put my hand down on top of what I've drawn already and draw something up on like up on the upper left side of what I've drawn. That was not the case here at all, and the whole drawing got extremely smudged. The ink, even after it dried, was very sticky uh, and, and smudged. Maybe it's the kind of paper I used. I was drawing on Bristol paper here, 
which for most of the other drawings I do is totally fine, works great. Um, so I don't know exactly what kind of ink it is. I should look into it a little more, um, but just that's a thing. So just so you, just that's a, that's a little PSA and FYI, uh, just so you know, okay. Hmm. So the calligraphy thing didn't work. The pens themselves worked fine. This part was obviously user error. Uh, the tools, the utensils were fine. The ink was flowing beautifully, richly, a little smudgily, but it was it was good and satisfying. I learned that it really does work better when you draw the pen across the paper, hence maybe why it's called drawing instead of pushing it, which is also how most calligraphic strokes work. I think it's all about pulling down, a lot of, a lot of down and across strokes, not very many pushing strokes. Anyway, so then I moved on to another doodle where I didn't embrace the style uh, or the spirit of the pen and didn't try to do anything calligraphic. I'll stop saying that word now. It's not a real word, is it? <laughs> it is now. How many times do you have to say a word before it's real? I don't know. I... Anyway, so I just went all sketchy and, and, and wild with it, and I really enjoyed it a lot more. You can use the very, like, edge. You can draw with the corner of these pen nibs, and um, you can draw very fine lines that have no width or anything. They're just like normal fine liner lines, and then you can rotate a little bit and start drawing thicker and thicker. I used, for the second drawing, I used the six millimeter nib, the very widest one. It's like a shovel, and I had a lot of fun with it. Obviously, these pens don't post either because the back end of the pen, uh, it narrows down very long and thin towards the back. I guess this is the, the, the body of these pens is kind of a classic nib holder construction size for, for calligraphy pen nibs and whatnot. People who are into that sort of thing probably know more, but it's not. It looks weird compared to all the rest of the pens I have, but it's not weird compared to how a lot of other calligraphy or, uh, you know, supplies are. But I like the pens. I had a lot of fun with it. It's great to be able to let, with one pen, be able to draw fine lines with the corner of the pen and then rotate it and just draw big, thick, uh, dark black areas and uh, get really sketchy and dark. And uh, I don't know, you look, look and see for yourself. It's really cool. I think I'll probably use these even some more in the future. The big downside for me, a little nitpicky here thing, is the, the fact that I had to use the... Or do these only use cartridges? I'll have to look and see if I can use uh, like a refillable um, piston tanks or whatever. Look, why? Look, imagine you have a car and you have your own gas station. You can fill your own car up with at home, right? Would you take the option to fill your own car up with the gas station at any time, any moment that you wanted? Or would you take the option where you had to buy pre-filled gas tanks? and have those stored, and every time your gas tank ran out, have to take the whole gas tank out and put a whole new pre-filled gas tank in. Personally, I would take the choice of having the gas station economically, conveniently. I, I just don't have a big desire to use pens that run exclusively on cartridges, but if these ones don't have uh, an alternative, they may be the exception because it was really fun to use. Uh, as you can see here. So thanks again to Goldspot for sending these to me. Check out the description for a link to their website. I'm sure you can buy them there along with some other ones. We'll, maybe I can use these other pens that I unboxed here at the beginning in some future videos. I'm sure they're all cool. All of those had cartridges. So another good thing about the cartridges is that when you first buy a pen, if you haven't also had enough forethought and foresight to buy any ink to go with it, your pen is ready to go right from the get-go, even though it might take a little bit of finagling and squeezing of the cartridge to get going. At least you're not sitting there with a car and no gas. You're good to go. So, I mean, there's ups and downs, but I'm not, I'm, I don't love cartridges. Anyways, cool pens, fun result. I had a great time. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you tried these or I don't know. It's, uh... Alright, goodbye. Love you.